and 10. News at bedtime. This is the News at Bedtime with me, John Tweedledum. And me, Jim Tweedledee. Tonight on News at Bedtime, we take an in-depth look at our fractured society, what they are calling knackered nursery land. The news that an old woman is to give birth at the age of 69 has prompted widespread national debate. It's not right, is it? Uh, She's already got loads of kids. And besides, she lives in a shoe. Our social affairs editor, Polly Put the Kettle On, presents a special investigation. But first, we have a report from our contrary correspondent, Mary Mary, who's going over the hills and far away. No, I'm not, Jim. I'm going down to the woods today. Fair enough. You can always be sure of a big surprise if you go down to the woods today. You can today, Jim, because the big surprise is there aren't any woods. They've all been cut down to make way for a big bypass. So what about the teddy bear's picnic? It's no picnic here, Jim, I can tell you. What do we want? Picnics! When do we want them? In the woods today! The controversy over the Boundary Cross bypass has escalated into running battles between the teddy bears and the police. Some of the teddy bears have even chained themselves to the few remaining trees. What sort of numbers are we talking about? Thousands, Jim. In fact, I think you could say that every bear that ever there was has gathered here for certain because today was the day the teddy bears should have had their picnic. But obviously that picnic plan was abandoned when the police and bulldozers moved in. Thanks, Mary Mary. I'm now joined down the line by the officer in charge, Commissioner Plod. Commissioner, surely this is a legitimate protest. A handful of Trotsky's teddies are undemocratically trying to disrupt the construction of a much-needed bypass. A bypass that will allow traffic to move freely in the Banbury area without hold-ups from cock horses and fine ladies with rings on their fingers and bells on their toes. Is the practice of kettling these bears somewhat heavy-handed? Kettling is a standard crowd control procedure designed for the safety of the bears themselves. But surely experience has shown that if you kettle things, they boil over. That is a fair point. In the event of the teddy bears getting steamed up, we shall revert to the traditional police methods of hitting them over the head with batons. Is that an appropriate response? Well, John, we are just doing our job, knocking the stuffing out of a few anti-capitalist cuddly toys. But Commissioner Plod, you have a very bad record with bears. After the controversial shooting of alleged porridge thief Goldilocks by your officers, you arrested the three bears for her murder. If you were suggesting that the Toy Town Police are institutionally bearest, then that is a very serious allegation. We have worked hard with the bear community to improve relations, and there are even bears in the force now, in panda cars. So, one last question, Commissioner. Will the police win this battle with the teddies? Do bears sh- uh, shame themselves with their toilet habits in the woods? No, they don't anymore, because there aren't any woods. How out, I pop round and give you a baton sandwich, fat boy. Thank you very much, Commissioner Plod. Jim. Now, a report in today's Daily Fairygraph says that accidents at work are on the rise, despite the best efforts of health and safety. With me in the studio is Theophilus Thistledown, who is a successful thistle sifter. Hello. Mr Thistledown, can you tell us exactly what happened? I was sifting a sieve full of unsifted thistles when I thrust 3,000 thistles through the thick of my thumb. Ouch! 3,000 thistles through the thick of your thumb and you sued your employer for making you thistle sift unsifted thistles in a sieve. I was awarded £30,000 in compensation. That's 10000 for each unsifted thistle thrust through the thick of your thumb, Mr Thistledown. Theophilus. Theophilus. And do you think that your thistle suit will mean an end to unsifted thistle sifting in a sieve thumb thrust incidents? Hard to say. Thank you, Theophilus Thistledown, the successful thistle sifting sewer. I'm glad I didn't have to interview him. Well, tomorrow you've got the man who saw Esau sitting on a seesaw. But now it's time for social affairs editor Polly Put the Kettle On with her special report on knackered nursery lamb. <laughs> it's night time, and the old woman who lives in the shoe is trying to get her children off to bed. Kylie? Darren, Beyonce, Ashley, the other one. You, shut it or you'll get a whipping. We want some pizza and nuggets. You've had some broth without any bread and that's all you're getting. Old woman, I can see that this is a loving family environment, but there are some who say that you're struggling to cope with 27 children in this shoe. They say that you have so many children that you don't know what to do. Well, I do know what to do. I'm going to have me another one. Are you quite sure that's a good idea? Because some might say you really are... Quite old. That's the whole point. I'm going to sell my storage to the news of the nursery world, aren't I? And what will you do with the money? I'm going to move out of this shoe and get myself a nice flip-flop by the seaside. Oi, Rio, get your brother's head out the shoe later, old. You're clearly under a huge amount of stress, old woman. Is there anything I can do? 
Well, Polly, you can put the kettle on. I was not the only one concerned about the footwear family. The old woman's neighbours fear that the children are out of control. Well, she's had 27 children by different fathers and they lack any sort of role model, not to mention any sort of discipline. One of the younger ones, I think he's called Willy Winky, recently ran a mock through the town in his nightgown, knocking on people's windows and shouting through people's doors. They gave him an asbo, but it, it really hasn't made any difference. I know one is not allowed to say it nowadays, but sterilisation certainly has its advantages. That's a bit strong, darling. Then what about fumigation? The place could certainly do with some odour eaters. What do you think the future holds for these children brought up in a shoe? I, I think it's sad but inevitable. The, the whole lot of them are going to end up in boot camp. More from Polly Put the Kettle On on Nack at Nurseryland later in the programme. But first, Thought for the Day. Uh, we regret that Peter Rabbi, who normally presents Thought for the Day, is otherwise engaged. So here instead is his cousin, Benjamin Sunny. Hello, John. Hello, Jim. With today's theme being that of misfortune, I thought I would try and make everyone feel better. The other day, I was with Peter in Mr. McGregor's garden. We were nibbling away on onions and radishes and juicy carrots. They were delicious. Then all of a sudden, we heard a big bang. Or rather, I did. Peter didn't, because his head was blown clean off by Mr. McGregor's shotgun. Poor Peter. I felt sad because Peter was gone from this life and his head was in the compost heap. But then I thought, hang on, he may be gone, but in a very real sense, Peter is still with us, which he is in this pie. Care for a slice, John? Mm. Mm. That really is delicious. Jim, you should try some. Mm, My favourite. I'll tell you something. It's the first time Peter's ever cheered us up on a thought for the day. (laughs) Good old Peter. And now, news of broadcasting treats in store. Tomorrow sees the return of My Little Eye TV's reality celebrity show, I'm a Princess, Get Me Out of Here, in which celebrity royals have to rescue the beautiful Rapunzel from her tower. Introduced, as usual, by children's favourites Ant and Bee. And today's trial is the same as every other day. Can the king's son get princess-in-waiting Rapunzel out of the tower in the middle of the forest without the wicked enchantress placing a curse on him? Yeah, I'm well up for it. Give it 110% on the day. Hopefully get a result. And you know what you got to do? Yeah, and actually I'm big. Really? Uh, whatever. Now, Prince, the tower has no doors and no staircase. How are you going to get her out of there? The plan is to get Rapunzel to let down her hair, climb up into the tower, win her hand, make a ladder made out of silk, then both climb down, run away, live happily ever after. Maybe get bladdered on a couple of mega mojitos in bougies first. <laughs> Let's hope the Enchantress doesn't take Rapunzel's place, lure you off the tower and then blind you. Wicked. <laughs> she certainly is. Find out how the Celebrity King's son gets on with the latest challenge in tomorrow's episode of I'm a Princess, Get Me Out of Here. Only on My Little Eye TV One. Award-winning rubbish there from My Little ITV's Facutainment Department. Now, today marks the official birthday of His Imperial Highness, the Emperor, and so we go live to our fashion correspondent, Gilly Silly, who is covering the royal birthday walkabout. Well, John, it's a marvellous scene here outside the palace as we wait for the Emperor. And, of course, we're all dying to know what sort of look he's gone for. Oh, here he comes now, wearing a stunning new outfit. It's a one-piece pink ensemble, closely fitted, figure-hugging, very textured, with a sort of dangly tassel about the midriff. Nice flourish. Very, very this year. Very, very now. Very, very, very. And and it's designed, of course, by the exciting new team of Swindler and Hustler, who are the happening tailors of the season. I'm joined by them now, Carl and Giorgio. How cutting-edge is this new suit? For sure, it is radical, and, and many stupid people will not get it. Yes, there will be Philistines who say, we cannot see it. Well, I love it. It's smart casual, casual smart. It's casual casual with a smart smart twist. The Emperor's got no clothes on. Oh dear, there's been a security lapse and somehow a lunatic protester has got near the Emperor. But thankfully the security forces have wrestled him to the ground. Ow! And now they've neutralised him with a taser. So he won't be a danger to the public anymore with his extremist views and terror agenda. Back to the studio. Thank you, Jilly Silly. Thank you, John. Thanks for thanking me. Thanks for thanking me for thanking you. Thanks for that thanking. (laughs) Jim. Thanks, John. 
Do I get a thanks? No. Well, thanks a lot. Now, one of the saddest manifestations of our modern obsession with fashion and looks is cosmetic surgery. Joining me in the studio now is the Little Mermaid. Little Mermaid, you were so unhappy with the way the lower half of your body looked that you went to see a cosmetic sorceress and had your tail replaced with two legs. And one of the side effects of this drastic procedure was that you had your voice taken away by the sea witch, rendering you mute. Which makes you, in radio terms, an absolutely useless guest. The Little Mermaid there with her tragic tale. Though she doesn't have a tail at all. It's not funny, Jim. It's one of our sad, depressing stories. Like your love life. Ow! Now over to Dilly Dilly with the weather. Thank you, John. We've got a wind coming in from the east, which is neither good for man nor beast. But by early morning, we can expect dew on the grass, which, of course, means that rain will never come to pass. And if you are a shepherd, you can look forward to quite a lot of delight thanks to that red sky at night. And that's the outlook from me, Dilly Dilly. And now back to Polly Put the Kettle On for the second part of her special report on knackered nursery land. It's tea time in old Mother Hubbard's house. Come on, doggy. Let's go to the cupboard and get you a bone. As so often in our uncaring society, the doggy is the only companion for old Mother Hubbard. Yet the state makes no provision for the dog's needs. A bone would not seem to be a lot to ask for in return for voluntary round-the-clock support. Oh. Oh, dear. The cupboard is bare. A metaphor for the shocking state of care for the elderly in nursery land. It's a familiar story in nursery land. Down the road, old Mother Shuttle lives in a coal scuttle, along with her dog and her cat. What they eat, I can't tell, but it is known very well that not one of the party is fat. A shocking picture there from Polly Put the Kettle On. Joining me in the studio is the Nurseryland Minister for Social Services, William McTrimbletoe. Good evening, John. Mr McTrimbletoe, you've heard the report and it's pretty distressing. What's to be done? We are aware that there is a problem with certain aspects of elderly care provision, child support in underprivileged communities and so on, but we're working on this. And you know, John, you can't just wave a magic wand and make it all better. Why not? Well, why not? It's not that you. Why not? Well, if you. Why just... can't you wave a magic wand? If you can't wave a magic wand in nursery land, where can you? Suppose you're right. There's no shortage of magic wands, is there? No. Then get waving. Okay, I will. Good. Thanks for coming on the program. Thank you. If you'll excuse me, gentlemen, I have a magic wand to wave. Now, there was going to be a third shocking part of Polly Put the Kettle On's report on knackered nursery land, but now that a magic wand has been waved, everyone's going to live happily ever after. So instead, let's have a look at tomorrow's papers. The Nursery Times leads with Old Woman to Live in a Luxury Ugg Boot. The Daily Fairygraph has Wee Willy Winky to Study Medicine at Harvard. The Daily Mirror Mirror on the Wall goes for, yes, it's a bonanza, Old Mother Hubbard to buy bigger cupboard. And the Twinkle Twinkle Daily Star has sensational pictures of Lady Godiva fully clothed. Good night. Good night. Sleep tight, old friend. You too, old buddy. Night, night. Nighty night. Sweet dreams. Ow! Ow! Oh! Ow! And that's it from the news at bedtime for now. You are listening to the Comedy Club. Comedy Club. This is the Comedy Club. This is the Comedy Club. Oh, wow. Come on in, let's have a laugh. I'm delighted to welcome to the Comedy Club. Well, 